Hey friends and welcome back to my channel. If you are a regular subscriber viewer, thank you so much for being here today. If you're new, please consider subscribing down below. I talk about mom life, foster care and adoption, parenting, a little bit of mama beauty, and I really want to inspire you to create an impact and live a beautiful life. So I'd love to have you subscribe if you're interested in any of that. Hi. I have a little friend here with me today. Our little rosebud. <laughs> Today what I wanted to talk to you guys about is the show This Is Us and it is wildly popular and I love how popular it has become not only in the foster care and adoption community because I know that's a lot of you know my friends in real life and in my online world and social media I follow a lot of foster families and adoptive families that sort of thing but to the general public I love how you know how wildly popular this show has become. Now, I wanted to talk a little bit about, obviously I can't speak to the adoption piece. I've done a ton of research. I've spoken to a lot of friends who have adopted, um, but personally myself, we are not there yet. It is something that we hope to do one day. But God hasn't given that child to us yet that we um, get to adopt and get to be ours forever. You know, a, a child who truly needs a family. That's my heart's deepest desire to provide a family and a home for a child that truly needs a family. So I know that child is out there one day, some way, somehow, he or she will come to us. I'm just trusting God's plan for our life in that sense. However, I have done a lot of research, not only for the channel and my blog, but I have done a lot of research on adoption. And I think the way that they portray adoption, when you're, let's go back to the first season and talking about Randall and finding his dad and, you know, having those emotional outbursts of anger and sadness and... I think a lot of people think that adopted children are not wanted and that adopted children in most cases have a better life, especially if they've been adopted through foster care or, you know, a really young mom or something like that that couldn't provide them a good life. And I just, I first want you guys to realize that placing a baby for, ad for adoption or placing your child for adoption is one of the biggest gifts that you can give your child and one of the most selfless things you can do because a lot of the times parents hold on to their children purely out of selfish reasons even when they know they can't give them a good life so when a child when a mother or father actually makes that decision i give them huge credit and huge kudos because they're doing something amazing for their child no they can't provide them a good life or they're been you know they're in trouble with the law or they're in trouble with addictions they're in trouble with whatever it may be and you know they're they're thinking about they're putting their child first so i really don't like the term giving up a child for adoption it's truly placing a child with a with another family adoptions used to be closed and now adoptions are open especially i'm not, i can't speak for everywhere but for around here where i am you know, we have to have some sort of, we have to go to a specific training just on openness and adoption. And we actually have to have a openness agreement when we get to um, the court proceedings for a legal adoption. So ad openness is huge. And, you know, I was doing a lot of research on this. Her mom was a drug addicted prostitute who left you on, left you in a dumpster. And you think that that child is going to hate their mother and hate where they came from and you know think that they have such a good life but for an adoptee they really have these feelings and obviously I can't speak for them but this is just from research I've done but they really have these feelings of what if and fantasizing about their life and yeah but if you know I stayed with my mom she would have stopped prostituting and she would have stopped doing drugs and we would have would have had a great life and went to Disneyland and all would have been good you know they truly have these feelings because they have this connection there's this missing piece that they don't know that they just think well things would have been different and if she knew me and if she, if I grew up and she knew me you know things would be different and it would get her out of where she was and sure maybe she was young but you know we could do it together and they really yes they really fantasize about what their life could have been and who their real family is or their biological parents are right so I want you guys to keep that in mind. No matter how hard and how rough the past of that child was, they're always going to want some sort of connection. Now, sometimes later in life they reach out and they find a connection and that, you know, their parent has grown up and their parent has um, overcome a lot of these obstacles, for example. But 
their parent still believes it was the best choice that they did for that child. And maybe not always, maybe, you know, and maybe they do think like, I did get my life clean in six months or a year and I, ha I lived a life full of regret that I placed you for, an ad for adoption. I should have raised you, I am your mother. And I think as the adoptive parents, you really need to be open to what sort of relationship is going to transpire. Not only in those early years of the first adopt of first adopting, but later on in life. Because, you know, everyone deserves second chances and a lot of people take those second chances and, you know, completely change their life around. And I am a firm believer that there's never too many people that can love a child. And I think having openness as much as possible is so beneficial for that child. And on the other side of the coin, you do want to protect your child. I mean, if they have a bio family member who just constantly, you know, say bio mom just constantly lets them down, says they're coming for a visit and they don't show up, or says they're bringing them something for their birthday and don't bring them anything. You know, I don't, as the adoptive parent, you are their real mom or their real dad in that moment and forever once you become their adoptive parents. And you have to protect that child from, you know, and you have to protect that child from their bio family sometimes. But that doesn't mean that you completely shut them out. Whether that's sending pictures, whether that's, you know, <laughs> making little videos or something. Just maintaining that contact through the years is so important. And when we go back to This Is Us and when you find out how devastated and angry Randall was with his mom when he found out that she knew his biological father and never told her. And I'm sure that was her way of trying to protect, right? When you see all this, adoption is such a broken but beautiful thing. And there's so many emotions and so many facets to it and just different opinions from the bio family, from the foster family, from the adoptee, or from the adoptive family, from the adoptee. And you know, one thing adoption isn't is easy. You may think things are going smoothly and, you know, the adoptive, the adopted child has no contact with their family and, you know, things are just, life is life and your family is your family. But somewhere along the line, they're going to have questions or somebody's going to come into their life or something is going to come up that's going to bring up these feelings and emotions. So I think This Is Us is such a great show because it just documents all of that. Now, you know, talking about adopted, adoptive mothers, fathers not bonding to their adopted child, you know, maybe that's the only way that you can have a child is by adoption. You have infertility struggles, you can't have kids, you know, and they, that's why when you do your foster care license, they really talk to you about have you dealt with those emotions and that loss because it is, it's a great loss not being able to have a biological child and you know, as much as you think you can love an adopted child, sometimes there's just this connection for people that have struggled with infertility that, you know, could I love a biological child more if I could have that? Or, you know, the bonding doesn't always come as quick and easy as just at first glance. In some cases, 100% it does, but not everybody. And it's okay if bonding doesn't happen easily, especially if you adopt internationally or you adopt a child with trauma because... Parenting that child is not going to be easy, and I'm going to be straight up with you guys. Parenting children that come from traumatic backgrounds is much more involved. It's much more difficult, and you know, you know, you're signing yourself up for a life of struggle in some some circumstances. You know, obviously not all, and kids are resilient, and kids can overcome many things. But when you're a trauma mama, like life is just different and parenting is just different and perspective is just different. So you have to take that into consideration and not feel guilty if you don't bond right away. But no, bonding will come and God put this child in your life for a reason and he gave that child to you, to mother and father for a reason and for a purpose. And you know, it, it's just life's greatest blessing. So being able to love a child that doesn't come from your womb, I think is just a miracle in so many ways and the capacity that we have as mothers and as fathers to love these children and care for these children. Do I believe everybody's called to foster and adopt? No, but I believe that there's many of us that are and God puts that desire in our heart and we need to act on it because it's going to be such a beautiful thing. Is it going to be hard? Yes. Are there going to be broken 
gut-wrenching moments, yes, but is there going to be amazing, beautiful moments? 110%. So just keep that in mind. Now let's talk a little bit about second season when Randall actually opens up their home to a foster child and they have Deja. And, you know, these experiences that they experience are real and it's not just the dramatics of the show. When he comes in and raises her, raises his voice because she was swearing at, um, Oh my goodness, what's her name? His wife. What's Randall's wife's name? I'm blanking right now. But she freaks out because you can tell she's been abused by a man before. And when you see the hope Deja has in her bio mom, even though she's let her down over and over and over, and she's been in and out of, in and out of jail, and you know, hi baby. Um, these are real emotions. This is not just a TV show with dramatics and things are like this is real life in the adoption and foster care community so I think if you want to know anything about it and you haven't watched This Is Us it's a great place to start but it really helps to explain all the emotions the brokenness the beautifulness of adoption and foster care so anyways that's all I wanted to chat with you guys about today if you like this video give it a thumbs up help to spread awareness for foster care adoption and these beautiful little souls. Thank you guys, go create an impact, live a beautiful life, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.